Hi guys and welcome back. This is part 6 of my C++ for game development series and in this part we'll be taking a look at arrays and loops. So let's get started but before we do that if you guys have any questions or suggestions make sure you guys do join my discord server and if you guys do wish to support me in any way link to my patron as well will be down in the video description as well as on the screen. So first of all let's talk about arrays. So an array is basically a collection of homogeneous data elements. So basically what I mean is you have multiple elements of the same data type. So let's say you have 10 players and you want to store the points of 10 players. Obviously having 10 different variables is impractical. So you would have an array and you would map each index of an array. We will get to what that is a bit later to the corresponding points and that's how you can store multiple elements of the same data type notice i say same data type basically with an array you can have you know multiple entries of let's say for example integer or float but you cannot have an integer and a float in the same array now this is something which you should know consecutive elements in an array are in consecutive blocks of memory so this allows you to perform you know pointer operations on them and stuff and arrays can be static or dynamic basically whether the memory is allocated statically or dynamically so static allocation basically refers to your c style or your std array and dynamic refers to std vector according to what we use of course of course you could write your own class but anyways so basically memory is allocated based on the size in dynamic arrays so let's say for example you have five elements so you can make sure that you allocate only as much memory as you need for five elements whereas with a static array you usually allocate a lot more than that and then the rest is just wasted memory so this is just what i mentioned Static arrays can be used through std array or through c style array. Dynamic arrays can be used through std vector. Now, in order to actually do some meaningful operations on these arrays, we need loops. So basically loops are used to run instructions multiple times. So basically the most common use case is to iterate through arrays. So you would read or write or do some sort of an operation for each element of an array and it's mostly used with arrays and these are the three types while do while and for we'll not really go over do while it's kind of never used uh, but i'll just briefly mention about it so the first type is the while loop it's very very simple basically while a certain condition is true a set of statements are going to be executed as simple as that now for loop is a little more complicated but anyways we'll go through it so we basically use a counter variable for a standard for loop or you also have you know your range based for loop you could also use iterators and stuff we'll be just uh, going through uh, the standard for loop with a counter variable and a range based for loop so this is the syntax again i'll show you guys how it works with an example so for and in parentheses you would have the initialization expression the condition expression and the update expression so what do these actually mean so initialization is basically the statement which needs to be executed as soon as you start the for loop so for for example generally you would have a counter variable which you want to initialize i'll show you guys all this through an example condition is same as what we had in the while loop as long as this condition is true this loop will keep running and update is basically what you want to do after each iteration of the loop so it basically goes like this initialization condition statements update condition statements update so so on and so forth until the condition is false of course or you could have a range based for loop so for range declaration range expression we'll see that to an example the syntax won't really make much sense here and that's about it we can head into visual studio now all right so we are inside visual studio and we have some stuff which we can proudly delete now the syntax to declare an array 
is pretty straightforward. So the first one I'll be showing you guys is a C style array. So you'd have your data type. So let's say for example, we take an array of floats for example. So float and you'd have your array name, which is kind of like your variable name. Let's say for example, ARR. And in square brackets, you would specify the size of the array. So let's say for example, we take 10 and you could just end this here or you could initialize it to certain values. The way you do that is using a pair of curly braces. So you would open curly braces, you would have two, three. Okay, well, let's have some decimal values as well, 1.2 maybe, stuff like that. So we have three elements. Now, one question you might have is why did we initialize this as 10? Now, the reason is you cannot change the size when the program is running with C style arrays. So this is a static array is what I mean to say. So you need to specify the size at compile time. Now, one might think you can do something like this int n equals, let's say 10. And you could put this as n. Now notice you get an error here. The reason is this is a variable. Now what if you do const and all of a sudden this starts working. That's because the size is known at compile time. That's what you need to ensure. So you can actually have something like this. So you can do hash define array size and let's say this is 10. You could take this and you could plug this in here as well. This is totally valid. So if I just run, uh, we are not printing anything. So we could, we, I'll print these once we actually have for loop uh, and stuff set up. Now, one thing you might ask is what happened to the remaining seven slots because we have only three elements. Now the remaining seven slots will just have zero initialized and Depending on your compiler, things might change, but for the most part, uh, it's pretty much a waste of memory. Now, one way you can prevent that is by not specifying the size. But in this case, the size is going to be three, so you can't add any more elements to this. Now, let's just keep it to array size for now. So this should be good. Now, if you want to access a certain element, so let's say we wanted to print the first element of this array. The way you do it is by using your array name and in square brackets, you type in the index. Now, array indices start from zero. So zero is going to be the first element. So ARR of zero is going to refer to two. So let's say I go ahead and run this. You'd see it prints out two. Let's say I do ARR of one. It prints 3.5. Let's say we do ARR of 2. It prints 1.2. Let's say we do ARR of 3. And it prints 0. Let's say we actually do ARR of 10, which should not be valid. You see, we get some junk value over there. So that's pretty much what you need to expect. Now even the compiler recognizes it. You're reading an invalid index. So 9 is going to be the last valid index. Okay, and let's just leave it as is. So that's about it. Now, another thing to know is the std array class. Now this array, although limited in functionality, you could do quite a few things with it. However, in C++, you have a little bit of boilerplate code written for you and especially useful when you're using iterators and stuff. So what you do is you declare an array as std array. Now we, we have namespace using namespace std so we don't really need that. So you do std array and as a template argument so you'd open your angular brackets and you would give your type and you can give the size of the array. So for example, std array int and 10. And let's say we do float again. One thing you might notice is I've included this array header file. You need to include this. Otherwise you're going to get an undefined type error. So if I just comment this line out uh, and I 
try to compile this this is not going to work you get an error even intellisense recognizes it so if i try to compile it you get build errors so you have to include this header file so now it should compile now don't confuse this to a dynamic array there is no dynamic array over here this is just your standard uh, static array but with a bunch of creature comforts that's about it so we aren't really going to be talking about this we'll mostly be talking about std vector because that's what mostly used in game development and that's the focus of this course so again you would access elements in the same way so x of 1 is going to refer to the second element x of 0 is going to be the first element so on and so forth and you can initialize the elements in the same way this is going to work totally fine as well so if i go ahead and print out x of 0 this is going to be totally fine as well so this is not an issue at all so what we are going to talk about mainly today is going to be your std vector class so std vector is your dynamic array now if you notice again this is not defined so just like how you include array you need to include vector and you get std vector this is still not gonna work because you need to have template arguments so this is going to be your type and we can call this one arr once again for example now this is a dynamic array now you can initialize it just like you would so let's say for example 12 13.4 maybe this is going to work but with a static array for example so i'll just create a c style array float arr1 let's say i give a size of 10 and maybe have a different element now if i want to add another element i would just do arr2 uh, sorry arr1 of now we have only one element so arr1 of, uh, of 1 equal to let's say for example 16.5 and this is going to work no problem so arr1 now if i go ahead and run this this whoops uh, arr1 is going to refer to the memory address sorry for that so arr1 of 1 is going to give me 16.5 now one thing you might have noticed is it printed something over there so that's basically the memory address of the array so the base address of this array so that's where it's located in memory you can actually do stuff like this this is totally going to work and this is going to go one element forward so four bytes forward and if you actually go ahead and use this operator i will talk about this when we talk about pointers so we get 16.5 so this is another way of doing it if you know how to use pointers and stuff in c c plus plus you would have an idea of what i'm actually doing now let's say we wanted to do something similar with arr so let's say i do arr of two because we have one element all i mean two elements already so index one is already set so equals 3.5 and let's say we try to print it out arr of 2 so if we go ahead and run this we get an error now this is going to be surprising for many of you guys this is an exception the reason is we try to assign 3.5 outside this array remember i told you guys this is a dynamic array if we want to add this we again need to find a new block of memory where we have at least the size of three elements available and put this element after this so basically add it to the array so what you do with std vector is use the pushback function or the emplace back function i'll talk about the differences in a while so array dot pushback and here you can have 12.3 for example now if i go ahead and print this this is going to be valid so basically you add it at the end and you can also use emplace back 
So M place back will do the same thing. Now the difference between M place back and push back is M place back is going to construct this element in place, whereas push back is going to create a copy and then construct it over there. So subtle differences. Generally, you'd you'd prefer M place back. for performance reasons but it's really not that much if you want to prevent much of memory copying and stuff you'd use in place back or push back so this is how you add elements to std vector now all sorts of operations can be performed using the functions in the std vector class so arr dot you'll get a whole list of functions now if you would see arr dot size for example this is one which you use a lot So this basically returns how many elements are there in the array. So I we can go ahead and print it out instead of arr of two. So we get three. So this is basically a dynamically sized array. Now, now that we are done discussing about this, now this is just how to add elements. Of course, the regular operations are going to work normally, and now if we want to iterate through an array. this is how you do it now we haven't talked about while loop yet or for loop so we'll get to that now so the first type of loop obviously is the while loop so while a condition is true you are going to do something so let's say for example we have a very simple condition so let's say we have int count so you would say while count is less than 10 you can go ahead and print count oops count and we have to increment count okay and we can initialize this to zero so this is something which you can do so if you can analyze the logic basically count start from zero first we check if count is less than 10 yes indeed it was less than 10 so we printed count we incremented count and we came back to the condition that's basically how while loop works it's very simple you guys can try a few examples and you will have an idea now let's say we do something like this um let's say we just do while choice equals true and if you have a boolean we don't even need to say that while choice so bool choice so we can just set this to true by default and we can say see out enter your choice and over here we can go ahead and ask them to enter a yes or a no okay and we can go ahead and take the input of let's say for example choice itself now we can have 0 and 1 to simplify things so if we go ahead and run this and one more thing we have to do is we have to do choice is equal to not of choice because if choice is true only then this loop is going to run so if we go ahead and run this let's say i type in 0 it's going to ask once again if i type in 1 it ends the program so stuff like this so as long as this condition is true it's going to execute instead of doing this you could do this as well this going to work totally fine uh whoops we need to set it to false in this case so if i type in 0 0 so that's basically it now let's talk about for loop now if you guys remembered the syntax for for loop it had three components the first one is the initialization expression So let's take the same choice example. So we don't need to put that here. We can actually move that inside here instead of the initialization expression. So bool choice equals false is our initialization expression and what's our condition you may ask. Our condition is choice 
is equal to false or rather you can say choice is not equal to true so as soon as choice is equal to true we break out of the loop and what you can do is for the update you don't really need to specify it but anyways you can put something in update so we can just print something hello for example and we could end the line all right now what we can do is we can add the same logic in over here so if we go ahead and run this so if i enter zero it's going to print hello and ask again zero it's going to ask again zero one and we stop right there so basically first bool choice is initialized to false so choice is initialized to false and then it it's going to check if choice is not equal to true so basically if this whole condition is true so choice was false so this whole condition will be true so choice is not equal to true that is correct and then it's going to execute the statement so we took the input for choice from the user and what we did is we executed the update expression so we just printed hello now generally that's not how you would do it you would use it to iterate through arrays now let's do it for our std vector over here so let's just have a few more elements so let's say for example 3.4 2.4 4 5 maybe now what we can do is we can have a variable as a counter so let's say we have in counter you would not name it as counter generally you would generally name it as i it's just a convention so let's do i equals 0 you don't have to do it you can do it in the initialization expression as i told you guys so int i equals 0 and we want to iterate as long as our array index is valid so what we want to check is if i is less than array dot size because if i is greater than or even equal to array dot size it is not a valid index and obviously after each iteration we want to increment i since we are iterating through it so now we can go ahead and print it out just like this so see out we could say arr of i this time so this is going to print each of our elements so it's as simple as that so for int i is equal to 0 i less than array dot size i plus plus now you could put any other expression depending on your use case let's say we didn't want to print the last element you can change your condition so now we don't print 2.45 stuff like that now uh stl provides uh, a bunch of different ways to iterate through all of this and we'll be talking about one more way to iterate through the std vector which is a range based for loop now a range based for loop is a way to iterate through this in a very simple manner so you would have for so the type of each element is going to be float so this is the range declaration so we could call this item you put a colon and you have the range expression which is basically your array so basically you're saying each item in this array is a float and you want to iterate through arr now let's say you don't want to go through the hassle of this you could just put auto that totally works and you could use a reference as well now you could go ahead and print arr i mean item obviously now here we don't have any counter but it's going to iterate through the whole loop now for the most part this is what you will be using for game development so that's why i'm going over just this much there is no requirement to over complicate things as such so that's about it this is how you'd use a range based for loop to iterate through any data structure for example so let's say we had an std map and we could do something so we can map a float to an integer for example 
and we again need to include map in our header file now this is not really a tutorial for using maps but anyways we'll talk about tmap in unreal engine so this is not good this it, it works slightly differently from std map so that's more similar to std unordered map again we'll not talk about that but basically we'll, i'll just go ahead and add an element so i can use m place and i can give the pair so for example 2.4 and i can give let's say 3 for example and now notice this does not work that's because we need the first which will be the key so this is basically the key so you can't have two map elements with the same key you can't have another element with 2.4 again we'll discuss about that later not to worry uh, item dot second this should work so now we go ahead and get this and we could go ahead and run this a bunch of times as well so let's say you have 234.5 maybe and let's say you have some other value you could have the same value so you could have three over there that's totally okay so this this works but you cannot have the same key basically so that's about it guys that's the essence of using loops and arrays now this does like require a lot of practice and experience to actually understand but that's basically the gist of it if you do solve a few examples you will have an idea of where you can use it and stuff like that we will go over practical examples once we actually head into unreal so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching if you guys did enjoy the video make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up and make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos goodbye